Well, how excited are you about today? <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> today is one of the types of videos that are our very favorite. Yes. Um, if you've been with us for a while, you know that a portion of everything that we earn through all of our social mm -hmm. media platforms, we donate to local veteran organizations. Yep. If you want to see the breakdown and exactly how much, what percentage of each platform goes, um, I'll leave a link up here for the, the video that actually breaks all that down. But today we're in Brooksville, Florida, and we're going to be going over to the Veterans Heat Factory. Yep. And we'll tell you all about that with the, uh, with the founder, Gus, mm -hmm. uh, coming up here in a bit. Um, but we wanted to talk to you a little bit before the main part of the video starts because, you know, at the end of all of our videos, we mm -hmm. honor a fallen hero. And today's is going to be different yes. than it has ever been before. Mm -hmm. uh, very unique in a couple of different ways. And appropriate for the organization we're visiting today. Exactly. So it, it lines up, the story of this fallen hero lines up with the mission of the place that we're making the yes. donation to. So make sure you stick around to the end. If you can't stick around to the end of the video, at least click forward to that and watch that before you leave this video because it's going to be mm -hmm. um, a very cool and unique thing that we've never done before. Yes. So we're headed out to the heat factory. We'll take you along with us. And we're going to donate money. money. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's going to be the largest single donation that we have been able to make. Starting 2021 off right. That's right. And it's all because of you. So thank <laughs> you. And we hope that you will join us in um, exploring and learning more about the Veterans Heat Factory here in Brooksville, Florida. Yeah. Today we are at the Veterans Heat Factory. And here we're here with Gus, who is the founder of the Veterans Heat Factory. First of all, Gus, what does heat stand for? It is an acronym for Honoring, Empowering, Assisting, and Training. Well, like we do about every once every three months, we try to find a local veteran organization that we can donate to, thanks to you who watch us and provide us with a little bit of income to give away to veteran organizations. Um, Gus, tell us a little bit about the Heat Factory and how it got started. Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming by. Thank, thank you, you very much for coming thank by. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's a long story. I'll try to cut it down as short right. as possible. <laughs> When I was 60 years old, that was six years ago, I was in prayer thanking God for where I was and looking for another thing that I could do to help my community. And I didn't serve, not that I didn't want to serve. I wanted to go into the Navy. They didn't want me because I was colorblind. Oh. So uh, in prayer, I heard God tell me, it always bothered you that you never served, serve those who served your country. I said to myself, I didn't talk this way, but this is what, <laughs> what came out. What, if there's a veteran up there and the veteran has a dog and the dog poops and I pick up that poop, I'm helping the veteran. That's where I'm going to start. Got to start somewhere. Got to yeah, start that's right. somewhere. That's right. So I went up there and lo and behold, it's amazing how he works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. The professor that was up there was somebody I knew 25 years ago or something like that. Wow. You weren't a professor. No. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> doing what I Just was a doing. mom. Yeah. <laughs> then of course we caught up and then she started telling me about the 22 a day that killed themselves, the drugs, the alcohol. Yeah. This is what it wants me to do. How can I help you? And it says, uh, the dog trainer says, well, we need two things. We need a place to be because we're outside in the woods and we need money. I said, well, I don't have the kind of money to make a difference, yeah. but I sit on a lot of boards and I know a lot of people that have space. I could find you something. Well, it turned out that three weeks later and a week before that, I couldn't find the place. Yeah. And I couldn't go back and say I was a failure. So. Where the camera is was my silk screening machines yes. and embroidery over there and something else over there. And I says, you know what? It's because veterans um, was out free enough to do something like this. Yeah. I don't know where we're going to go from here, but they're coming in here. And I cleaned it out and it became Canine Partners for Patriots. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this can't stop. Hey, Diane. <laughs> yeah. We need to take it to the next yeah. level. So speaking of which, yep. introduce us to <laughs> Diane. Diane Kuhn is our... A professor from St. Leo. She's in charge of our mental health program. He called me and said, what do you think about doing something like this, which started out with exercise okay. because we knew it helped them. But it yep. was also a way to get them in here because yeah. it's straight in the door. Yeah. Right, exactly. And then from there, we started doing a weekly group where we addressed topics that they needed to become a civilian or to deal with life. And that went very well. In fact, they would repeat them because they didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. So we would talk about um, what is PTSD and managing anxiety and 
sleep uh, hygiene, um, mm -hmm. moral injury, you know, all sorts of different topics, and it was helping. Um, yeah. They were starting to lose their anger, and part of it too was the um, atmosphere here. Yeah, I, I actually, I have trouble with integrating well with people that I don't know initially, but walking in here today, I felt I felt very comfortable walking yeah. in here. Everyone was very welcoming and very uh, courteous. And I like the way that you've set up the, the counseling yeah. uh, areas because well, there's what, five rooms yep. over mm -hmm. here. Yeah. They are open to the bigger area so you don't feel like you're, you're closed in. The seating is arranged to where the veteran doesn't feel like they have their back to the yeah. door. They don't feel like they're trapped in a small space and confined. Uh, it feels very inviting. The decor looks like a home mm -hmm. more than a uh, more than like a counselor's office, because trust me, I've been in several <laughs> counselor's offices, and it, I know what a counselor's office feels like. <laughs> it doesn't feel like that. Yeah. And then you've also got the gym in the back, right? Mm -hmm. which you said was mostly... A lot of it I picked up at uh, garage sales. Yeah. A lot of it we That's put awesome. pieces together. Yeah. Uh, we, we've been on a shoestring budget for yeah. four years now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we've had comments even from trainers who come in here and say, "This is a really nice, nice gym. gym." They it weren't is. expecting it's it. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it is very nice. Yeah, and so the majority of the people who who work here are either volunteers. No, everybody. Is everybody's volunteers. everybody's volunteer. Everybody's volunteering their hundred percent of their time. Yep. And how do you get your funding to to keep it going? Mostly by her left pocket and my right pocket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, the money's not coming in. It's, yeah. it's just not coming in, so we have to do what we have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the counselors take their own furniture from the house and bring it wow. in there. And, yeah. and we also, these counselors were earning clinical hours, uh, and when yeah. they, some of them finished their clinical hours last August, and here they are still wow. today. Wow. So it, once you're here, it's very hard to leave. To walk away yeah. from, yeah. yeah. And I tell them, you will never see healing like this other places, so yeah. please don't yeah. think you will because part of that, um, what you were talking about, that vibe, mm -hmm. yeah. is healing. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it is a family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How big of an impact has uh, COVID had on your organization? And I know it probably had an impact on, on how much uh, donation money you're getting from the community mm -hmm. and how much you know people that were volunteering time can't because they got to go make right. some money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how hard have you been hit by that? Very hard, extremely yeah. hard. Uh, and you know somehow we work it out with the monies, but the, the veterans, I think it's harder on them, as you know, the, yeah. the, uh, the stress of COVID and not being able to come here. and. Some of them don't like doing virtual. And, yeah. Uh, now, what I found unique about this organization is, and we were talking a little bit about this earlier off camera, was um, it's a one-stop shop for veterans because mm -hmm. the navigating all of these systems can be so frustrating for a veteran mm -hmm. when you're talking about trying to find a job or trying to get back in school or trying to file for your, your benefits or even just trying to navigate your relationship with your spouse and mm -hmm. your family. Yeah. A veteran can come in to hear and get all that help from all these different resources in one spot and I know firsthand that navigating all those individually on my own trying to figure it out by myself I mean there were a couple of times where I almost threw my hands up and said yeah. it's not I'm done it. with it I'm yeah. not even messing with it anymore mm -hmm. so yeah. that in itself I think is a great resource for a veteran to come in and to have all this help to navigate One less all thing of those on their things. Place. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they're cool. not doing it alone. And so Brianna brings all that knowledge here, and she's going to be starting um, military sexual trauma groups in which we will hold it at a time where nobody else is here. Yeah. So yeah. that they feel safe and yeah. they will be gender separate. So that's very nice. cool. And that's something that not a lot of people are, yeah, are dealing with or or confronting is the sexual assault and those types of PTSD issues because that happens a lot in the military and we don't really talk about that a lot we talk about combat related yeah, yeah. PTSD but sexual assault sexual harassment is is a big deal it's it big happens deal. a lot in the military and it's, I think because it's not a very um, palatable subject we kind of just don't talk about it as much right. yeah. yeah exactly can you tell us Gus if if we have someone who is watching now who wants to make a donation or a contribution to help the Veterans Heat Factory, how can they do that? If they went to our website at www. Is that, how many W's was that? Yeah, was that three. That was <laughs> www.veteransheatfactory.com 
There's a button there that says donate. Awesome. We'd love to weigh that button out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we will definitely put a link uh, to that mm -hmm. in the description of this video so it'll be easy for you to find to go do that. Um, and I think now we are going to get to the part where we're going to donate some money to the Veteran Seat Factory. <laughs> it's our favorite it's part. Our favorite, yeah. This is our favorite videos to make and this is our favorite parts of those videos to make is giving money to, to veteran organizations to keep going what you guys are already doing great but we know it's not free it's not and it's not cheap so we're going to do a little bit and we hope that it helps uh, every little bit helps Absolutely. every little bit is a lot yeah yeah mm -hmm. and we did also want to mention uh, behind the camera here is michael and shelly from our epic rv adventure mm -hmm. with talon and they also have a youtube channel we will put a link in the yep. description of this video to their channel because they are also um, taking a portion of everything that they earn and they're actually donating it to veteran organizations a second hand kind of way through they're you. through yeah. us they're, yeah. they're they're taking whatever portion they want to donate Supporting to veterans and adding it to our pile so that our pile will be a little bit bigger beautiful That's so beautiful. by watching really their channel yeah. or our channel your Those monies money. go to veteran organizations. So thank you guys. We appreciate yes, that. Thank you. you so much. So they just they just did a, a donation to us, which is lumped into this donation, uh, which is going to make it a little bit bigger than what it was going to be. So we definitely appreciate that. Yes. So Great. Leslie is going to break out the big right. check. Uh -huh. And so we would like to present you guys with a check for $1,450. Cool. Oh my Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. You. You're welcome. And we oh, hope that, our pleasure. that this little bit of money that, that we can give you today will help you to do whatever you can do to help these better. Start 2021 off a little bit brighter. We, <laughs> we were just so talking much. about how we could raise some money for some copies we have to make. That's there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Thank you Thank so much. You're welcome. It was our pleasure. So Thank you guys. Happy to do it. Yeah. And like we do at the end of all of our videos, we're going to honor a fallen hero. It's going to be a little special. Yes. We're going to cut back to us in the RV to tell you more about it because we want to go into a little bit of detail, but definitely hang out with us. It's not like any other one that we've ever done. It's very special. Normally at the end of all of our videos, when we honor a fallen hero, it cuts straight to the slideshow and the music. Yes. Shows a little bit about the hero and then the video is over. This one's a little different. Yes. We were in our campground in Tampa, and we were walking around. We walk around a lot at the campgrounds. Yeah, take our daily walk. And we came across a golf cart that had a, a decal of a soldier on it, yeah. and it had a, a date period from this date to this date. Yeah. And uh, so we knew that the soldier was no longer with us. Um, and at first I just assumed that it was a combat related Com yeah that's where our heads usually just go so we stopped and talked to the lady that was there uh whose name is lynn mm -hmm. turns out it was the soldier's mother and the soldier uh, did not die in combat um and we chose not overseas combat internal combat yeah we chose we chose to honor him today uh in conjunction with this donation video because of all the work that the veteran sea factory are doing yeah. with service members and ptsd and after service members get out of the military and um so ricardo ricky as his mother called him mm -hmm. acosta um lost his battle with ptsd um we talked about it in during the interview with gus and his staff today yeah. that 22 veterans commit suicide every day and before I went to combat I did not understand suicide no I, I felt like it was the most selfish well, act that yeah you, you could, stated that before that you could do I felt like you are relieving yourself of the pain and passing that pain to everyone who loves you yeah mm -hmm. after going to combat I understand it better now yeah because in the mind of the person who is suffering from PTSD they are causing their family and their friends and their loved ones pain mm -hmm. in their mind they feel like they are a hindrance yeah. to society 
Um, they cannot manage their emotions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can't find work. Yeah. Can't get through school. Have trouble with relationships. Fight with their spouse. Sometimes physically, mentally. Um, and especially when you have a, a, a PTSD moment and you're not inside your own body and you yeah. cause harm to your family or friends or loved ones, you really feel like... That would be the best for everybody. Exactly. You, And so actually, it's the opposite of what I just said. Yes. The service member who's now suffering with PTSD now feels like it's the most selfless thing that they can do yeah that's how it's rationalized and so in their mind it's best for everyone yes and in that moment it makes sense to them mm -hmm. and in that moment they make that decision yeah to take their own life so I understand it better now mm -hmm. I wish that Ricky had been able to find a place like the veterans heat factory yeah because I think they're saving lives Mm -hmm. um, the reason that we cut back to to this setting is because uh, I didn't know how well I was going to get through this and I didn't want to have a moment in front of everybody mm -hmm. there at the Veterans Heat Factory so I figured well, we'll come back here and we'll talk about it and, and actually uh, doing better than I thought I was going to do mm -hmm. because I have had, I've had friends, I've had brothers in arms, sisters in arms yes. who lost their fight yeah, you've had those late night calls with people. I've had to talk people off the ledge. Mm -hmm. And so I get it now. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you. So that if you are in the same mindset that I used to be in, that suicide is a selfish mm -hmm. act, um, to a regular person that seems logical. Yeah. But to those of us who suffer with PTSD, uh, it is the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. The feeling is that I'm, I am sacrificing, just like they would go downrange, down range, yeah, exactly. into a combat zone and risk their life, for the freedom and happiness of their family. They now feel like they are giving their life up, for the freedom and the happiness of their family. Exactly. So, um, believe what you want about suicide, but the truth is that there is a. A, a big problem in the United States with with veteran suicide, um, and it's one of the, one of the reasons that we started doing these donations. Yes, is to help organizations that can reach out to these service members that can help them to not be a statistic. Yes. So we are going to leave a link in the description of this video um, to a hotline. So if you are having issues, if you know someone who is having issues. If we need to talk to someone, reach out to somebody, talk to somebody, family, friend. I know in your mind it's 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 the way to, to relieve everybody's pain, but there are other ways, mm -hmm. and you can get past this. Uh, a lot and of, there are wonderful people out there. Yeah, want, who want to who want to help take that pain away. Yeah, so don't suffer in silence. Don't suffer alone somebody loves you you are adding um, substance to someone's life you're making them happier than they would be without you I promise because when you go it hurts mm -hmm. so stick with us for the next couple minutes as we honor Ricky Acosta and uh, we appreciate you watching see you next time Bye. Bye.